You're all very, very welcome to uh, episode 16 of the podcast for Wednesday the 12th of July, 2017. How the jizz Oh, things are good here. Things are good here. Um, had a fun weekend since chatting to you last. A couple of uh, very different gigs. Excuse the dog here if you hear her lepping around the place. She's turned into a fucking mountain goat these days. She's... Uh, Everything has to be climbing on top of heads and all the rest of it. So rather than just leaving a run fucking fuck shot around the <laughs> fuck shot. Rough shot, I should say, around the house. Uh, we're here. She's behaving herself now. Taking less dumps indoors. Far less. Isn't that right, dog? Good dog. I look like this. She's going to fucking answer me. That would be class, wouldn't it? The dog just starts. Well, Tom, I think you'll find. That's the dog. All right, down you go. It was. It was a fun weekend. I hope you all enjoyed yourselves. I was uh, Thursday night last. I was down in Tipperary. I was down in uh, the homeland, Tipperary. I was there too with uh, my two mates, the, the two Johnnies, Johnny Smacks and Johnny B. The two boys, they're um, kind of internet sensations. I know Johnny, they've been doing songs for years and they, they have, um, you'll know, you'll know the lads. They, they're basically every championship. Uh, they come out with a brilliant song basically just a real catchy song for the Tipperary team um, now we, we come, had to come in the back door this year so it's the, the song hasn't come out yet plus the boys have been doing sketches so they they finally you know figured right time to take these sketches and take the colossal following that they have and put on a live show and the lads rang me and just I went, yeah of course I'll open for you you know what I mean because they were they had no idea who's asked to open for him I was like yeah, well, I'm going to fucking open for you because you, as mates you want to set him on the right track like and it was it was ridiculously class Sure, O'Keefe Stanley Clan Mel you can never go wrong Fergal has two shit hot fucking venues there it was part of the Junction Festival but it was um, completely sold out two days beforehand sold to the Shaggin Brafters it was unbelievable so you couldn't you can't go wrong people buzzing there was a Large demographic of young women at the thing too. I think they they're they their eye and the buys. Not that in fairness two lads are well and happy hitched as far as I know, but it was um it was a fun, fun gig. It was uh, tough to get away at the end of it. <laughs> it's like I'd forgotten how much to bring people like to talk. Uh, I got one or two guys just coming up going, Do you remember I was in school with you? And it, there's no f- there is no way these blokes were in school with me. Like, one dude, he was in his 50s. Unless, you know, he wasn't great at school. I don't know. <laughs> Unless he was pulling the piss. But this one guy was adamant he was in school with me. He was like, dude, what have you been doing to yourself? You look like shit, is what I thought. But I didn't obviously say it. it was, he looked ropey, the poor bastard. He looked like he'd been living a hard life since, since he left school. Um, yeah, still having the, having the life of a stand-up comedian. No stress whatsoever, but it was it was a it was a hell of a fun gig. Back up the road, then uh, I did a I had an interview for next week's podcast early in the morning, Friday morning, and then off to Oma on Friday night, which would have been Friday the seventh or eighth, I think. I can't, I can't even work it backwards. But why I say that is because the twelfth in the north of Ireland. The 12th of July is quite a big day for uh, a certain group of people. They love to make a big deal about it. Um, and the last time I was actually, not the last time I was in Oma, to play in Bogans, Connor Keys and uh, Chris Bowes run a fantastic club up there. But they used to have a place called Dailies, which is up the road. And the last time I went to do Dailies before, um, before it shut down, there was, it was the day after St. Patrick's Day. It was like, you know, whatever, uh, March 18th. And I got stopped coming into the town. I'm like, what the f-? The cop stops me. And he's like, oh, you're, you're, you're not coming in to the town? I'm like, what? What? He's like, I know, no. Uh, yeah, they're, they're marching. They're marching practice. I'm like, marching practice? Of course, no, no way did my brain go to, oh, right, you mean the lads that bang the drums and celebrate that real stretch of a thing to celebrate which was the I think the count was some Dutch fella beating Catholics like three or four hundred years ago I mean that's a stretch if you're looking for something to celebrate that's a stretch you know that's right up there with 
my cousin bought a new cow, so let's celebrate. You know, that's that's a fucking stretch by anybody's books. But I had no idea. I, I, the only thing in my head was that these people were celebrate or that they were practicing for the following St. Patrick's. Like, they were 364 days early with practicing. For, I was like, fuck, that is dedication for St. Patrick's Day. I couldn't have been more wrong. Quite the fucking opposite, in fact. But this time I thought, I, it was only like halfway up, I'm like, oh Jesus Christ, we're close. I was stopped in fucking St. Patrick's, the day after St. Patrick's Day last year. Definitely they'd be practicing, but thankfully they weren't. They would practiced in some other town that particular night, so it was grand. They were out of it. It was, um, it's funny, like, I, I never met anybody at a comedy club in, in any part of the north who gives a shit about that kind of stuff. Never. I've never met anybody. They all laugh at it like, yeah, yeah, there's, uh, yeah, whatever. It's like, pfft, you know, it's like the embarrassing cousins, you know, who have a weird fucking family business, like, you know, they miss, you know, they wank off sheep or something. For, it's that's, you know, that's the level of, oh, oh yeah, the lads. That's the level that you, I get off everybody. No, I've never met, and I, I'm, I'm assuming I have. Ne- it's not that I performed to. Although I don't know, there was one guy. It, it, this is the strangest thing that every comedian would be, would tell you. You could be rocking a room of two thousand people, but if there's one person with a with a face on him, with like not laughing, it seems you know what I mean. If there's one person who's just got a fucking straight face, not laughing. That's the person you will focus on. I don't know what it is. You, they could be way up the back. But there was a guy. The club, I was a brilliant night anyway, but they, the, um, there was a guy, one guy, who didn't cause any hassle or anything, but he was sitting like five or six rows back. And he was there, his missus was cracking laughing, everybody on either side was cracking laughing, but I think I might have set it off on the wrong foot. I think he may have been wishing he was out there with the drum. I, or maybe just he was struggling with my accent or something, I don't know, but he was, he just, the guy, I was there for like 35, 40 minutes, and the guys didn't, I don't know if he cracked once, there was the drunkest man in the world there as well, like, but he was just, even his friends were like, oh man, the guy struggled sitting down, do you know what I mean, he wasn't at that level of fucking drunk, he, he'd been downstairs drinking or whatever, he came into the club and he was like, scooting across his friends, and you could see every one of them looking, going, oh Jesus, and he actually made a bollocks of sitting down. He kind of half fell off the seat and... Fuck. <laughs> he tried to have a word with me and it was like, oh, for fuck's sake. This is not... It was a fun, fun gig, though. Fairly tiring heading back down given the the, the, the 72 hours or so that... Not even, said, I suppose, 48 hours prior to that. But I have I've verified that I think the greatest petrol station in the world isn't the Obama Plaza or isn't Junction 14 on the M7. A lot of people have a lot of favourites, but I genuinely think the one outside Monaghan has to be the fav- the best. I went in there at 10 to 1, and it was a bloke still making... You know what I mean? There's no talking through the hatch, none of that shit. You can actually walk in there like a human being. You don't even have to get him to fucking release the petrol station, the petrol pump thing. You just start feeling as like it's 1 o'clock in the day. You walk in there like an honest human, you're treated less, you know, like an animal than you are in most places. But there was a bloke in there making sandwiches, working in the deli. I was tempted just to say that I was able to get a sandwich made at one o'clock in the morning outside on the edge of Monaghan Town. It's a fine, fine petrol station. Not bad coffee these days either. It used to be ropey as shit, but it's actually pretty all right now since they they changed it up a bit. Um, Following morning, off down, I think I was telling you that I had to go to Cork for a win. I'm not really allowed to talk about it too much. I got uh, it was, it was grand. <laughs> it was a mixed wedding in that it was a French chap. Well, I think he's French. His parents are French, and a, there was a couple of French people there. And there was some speaking of French at the church. Of course, we were late. We were on time to get to where we thought we were going, but turns out it's a secondary girl secondary school with the exact same name. 20 miles away from the actual church uh, we pulled in there bang on time but fucking no wedding going on because it wasn't actually at a school it was at a church when we double checked it then it was like oh right there's another St Mary's 20 miles out the country so we're late at that stage so we ju- we, we stopped for 99s on the way I'll be honest with you it was uh, it called for it was like 22 degrees you know yourself 99s we got there alright and we, we still caught most of the the watch them call it and, but the Airbnb absolute revelation nicest woman in the world 
she had this house a quarter mile from the actual venue and she dropped us over to it she was like oh hello just the loveliest North Cork lady you've ever met she was like absolutely I will drop you over That's no-. and like she was even going like if you can't get a cab later at like three in the morning she'll look at I'll get out of the bed and come over and get you like you're going that is that service that is above and beyond service the wedding itself was lovely I mean people were um, I suppose you see I get used to like going to events where people are used to being loud mouths and things like that so everybody's kind of there is no awkwardness I found a kind of a level of awkwardness like but I think people kind of got on in the end they got on because it was an open bar too that's a handy one like I didn't get out I didn't go hard because I can't drink anymore I can't unless you're drinking regular and you're young and shit I can't drink not like I used to be able to like you'd be slaughtered on five pints these days like so I didn't I, I didn't I don't have the capacity capacity to do it so it was fun um it's been yeah just busy then when you actually head away for a, a like a day and a half you've got a ton of shit to do when you come back then so yeah that's what it's been for the last couple of days because I had to write up a couple of pitches and things like that for shit that nobody on listen to this podcast gives a shit about but that was actually you know what I did I was I'm still hanging on Sunday and I'm I can, I'm not going to name the name of the place but there's a chain of pizza joints that are of <laughs> it, it would suggest they're of Native American origins I got a pizza because and on a Sunday, because I was still a bit hanging, you know, you know yourself. Oh Jesus Christ Almighty! No, I don't know. Was it a combination of the fact that I was kind of hanging a bit, and then I got this pizza? Oh what? Oh, but by Jesus, to say that I was in rag order yesterday, I was in ribbons. It was like I'd eaten a bunch of fucking gone off fucking concrete or something. Oh my God, my guts, everything, and fucking ribbons yesterday. So I'm blaming that pizza. I'm blaming that pizza. Um could be something to do with my own you know indulgences of 99s and chicken wings and stuff like that at all hours of the night but look I'm still going to blame the fucking pizza so yeah rather than me yammering on any further obviously um, you'll hear in the opening bit of this we're chatting because Tara Flynn she's from Cork originally moves, originally got off the foot with uh, we didn't go deeply into Cork hurling um, but she mentioned something about Christy Ring because you'd sometimes find people there was a fact mentioned that Christy Ring's record had been beaten this weekend and I said I jumped in and said well of course it must be a Tipperary player it must be after beaten because you know his record turns out no it was a Cork player and it was a Cork record is what it was Christy Ring his uh, his all time points tally was beaten by Patrick Horgan this weekend so you'll hear that's to correct the mistake made at the beginning of this but then you know I'm ridiculously over the top because Tipperary Seamus Catalan did score 3-11 this weekend in the beating of uh, Dublin. Thank God herself here. She is from Dublin, but she's not a hurling fan. Could have been a, a frost, frosty reception on the drive back up, but I no, she didn't give a shit. Well, you can't even argue with that. It was like 6-23. To, it was the most... Like, I don't know. I didn't, hurl, I didn't get to see the match because we were at the wedding, but I, I don't know. Did, did fucking Dublin turn up with tennis racks or something? I have no idea how you get beaten that bad. And like, but they did. And that was that. It was a, a drawn series with the Lions. Um, I don't know how many Lions fans listen to this, but yeah, d- there was a it was a drawn series. They won one each, and then they drew the final game. But it was a weird thing. Sky Sports kept on caught. Oh, this is what they call kissing your sister. And it was like, oh, okay, yeah, we get the reference. Yeah, yeah, because you know you're still kissing the girl, but it's not you. Know. But they said it like five, if not six times. It's like, okay, okay, we we, we, we get it. We don't, we don't need any more talk of kissing your sister. What the f- um, yeah, and it just seems to be on a brilliant Instagram posts from the likes of Sean O'Brien, who seems to be locked for the last three days, which is great, great to see. Great to see it in a professional era. It's nice to see it. So gigs coming up. Uh, I'm in Chaplin's in the city centre all weekend this weekend coming um, I think I'm, there's a couple more next week but of course the night one next week if anybody's in the Galway district Buckshot Davy Riley the fantastic Davy Riley is coming with me to for the on the 20th to the Roisin Dove tickets are on sale at roisindove.net so if you know any of Galwegians or Galov people why not pop along it's part of the art well it's not part of Arts Week but it's on during Arts Week so if you do fancy that as a form of art come see Tom and Davy doing some stand-up comedy in the beautiful surroundings of the Roisin Dove. Like I said, uh, Dublonians, I'll be in Chaplin's this weekend. 
of course to feel free to engage I started actually finally started a Twitter page for the podcast it's uh, Bookshot Pod or Bookshot Podcast you'll find it anyway it's there are no other ones thankfully um, so yeah follow it check it out if it's enjoy, if it's easier to find shit that way or just go straight you can and you know what too I'd, I'd like people to send me some questions get questions do you think my fucking lunatic look at the world could actually answer your life problems I, I'll at the top of the show I'll do it I'll do it I'll answer your questions or if you have suggestions or whatever but of course you can also subscribe through SoundCloud iTunes whatever platform really you can find this on subscribe to it share it tell everybody how great it is maybe I don't know but anyway getting on to Tara Flynn Tara's an absolute legend she's 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 stuck in everything really she's a fantastic actor but very very funny very funny she does the improv every single Monday in the international with a bunch more like Kevin Gilday and you'll hear you'll hear in this we'll talk about it anyway but she's done she's done a bunch of cool acting things great voice over act you'll hear you'll hear her talk about some of the the voice over gigs she's had done through the years written a couple of class books as well from uh, We're Grand and what was the other one we actually talk about it in it we talk about it in it god my brain is all over the fucking shop I had to wash the dog earlier and it's just the most traumatic thing ever uh, anyway please give it up for the absolutely fantastic Tara Flynn <laughs> You're very welcome. Thank you for having me. How's tea? the tea? The whole it's delicious. I like the way you didn't over milk the living Jesus out of your tea. I don't either, like you... too milky. I don't like that. No. Yeah, just, just... Usually I don't drink milk at all. Don't, don't you? Think, no, I drink uh, I drink soy milk or I leave it out altogether. The lactose. Is yeah, it, it's a bit it... of that, and you know, you know, just also you know keeping an eye on the old dairy levels. Yeah, but you're not allowed to say that, or you're you're harming Irish agriculture. What? You, I drink lactose-free yeah. milk. Well, now they've pulled the lactose out of it down. <laughs> they do it down at Wexford, apparently. They have a they have it down to a tea where they pull lactose out of milk. God, I and don't in my, I believe it, in that. Same as I don't believe in gluten. I know, I know. It hmm. it has stopped me getting heartburn in the morning. Well, now you're killing Irish agriculture, and I can't believe well, they're, they're they're just still milking yes. cows of some sort. I don't know. Are they specialist cows? Country people like ourselves are doing this <laughs> just out of malice. <laughs> what enough about us? <laughs> yeah, exa- no, no, it's going to be completely about us for the entirety. Hooray! How often do you get home to Kinsale? Because I was only there the uh, other day, and oh, I was, yeah, I was just thinking of you going. This is a fucking class place to it grow up. It is a class place to grow up, and it's a class place to have to go back. To. It's sort of like it, when Christmas comes around or whatever, and um, people be going, uh, oh, home, you know, and home, you know, can yeah. be, you know, it's and Christmases are often fraught. Yeah. But to have Kinsale to go back to because you can get out for a lovely walk, or you can go for a lovely drink on yeah. Stephen's Day or yeah, anything. Yeah. There's loads of places to go, and a lot of uh, people I went to school with are still there. It's yeah. understandable though, because you know a lot of people like, like they they end up in Kinsale. Yeah, and also I, I think it was because there was because tourism was the industry mm. that kind of kept going with international business, even though it had a slump same yeah, everywhere. Yeah, yeah. It sort of kept going, and Cork Airport getting busier, and we're on the airport yes, side of yeah, the city yeah, yeah. all of that really helped and but sure I've been an eternal culture because um, I lived four miles outside Kinsale when I was growing up that's right yeah. were you out which direction were we you we were then? out the back road to Cork um, near yes. the woods there's a little bit of woods near Glendonine Ballantubber is yeah. the name of yeah, yeah. the town land for this, a, this for sister's a in Oval, so I do know where oh, you are yes, yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. not too far from River Stick yeah 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 but on the back road so River Stick's the main road to Cork that's, so that's right road. country that this is. is right country that exactly is. so so when I would go to school and consider we went to the convent every day from, from the age of four it was, we were in, in town in the convent yeah and um so primary school and secondary school and so there we were called cheese because we were out the road but well, you were even called cheese to the townies then even were called yeah. to the townies and then went to UCC and I was called cheese because I was from Kinsale and now I live in Dublin and I'm called cheese even though my accent is a big mishmash of everything yeah, yeah, now yeah. Um, I am, I'm an eternal cultie. but you can still hear it in there though it's there and it's there especially when I'm not working yeah, for work. yeah I remember yeah. when I first moved to Dublin um, we talked about voiceovers you did because you, yeah. you were fantastic it was here in the, the yeah. stag's head you gave yeah. us a great master I went and got a 
off the back of it I got a demo done with oh, Noel and the Beacon oh brilliant brilliant and it came out for sounding far better than I thought it would I know he's amazing <laughs> I don't read there's some great engineers in town and stuff but um, yeah it's it's. I discovered when I first moved up even though because my mum had been living in Canada just before right. she moved home and met dad and right. had us so she had a Canadian accent when I was growing up so I had a mixture of I suppose Canadian cork um, mad accent <laughs> then moved to Dublin and so people would often say oh your, your accent's quite neutral and I was going there's no such thing as neutral there's no such no, thing no, they, no, there's yeah, literally yeah. no such thing even if it's that you know the year you were born something makes it specific yeah. Yeah, yeah. so um, but what I discovered was when I started doing voiceovers for ads and things they say can you make it more neutral and what they meant was more South Dublin yes oh, I, and that's still going so I had that to learn still going, as you well how know. to do a South Dublin accent and I was doing it so regularly then that and because I, you know, I live in South yeah. Dublin and it's gone in. So yeah, I've got the weirdest mix. I often get taxi drivers saying to me, "Where are you from? It's driving me crazy. Yeah. Where are you from?" For some reason, I keep on getting the west of Ireland. Really? Yeah, like Tipperary could be South Tipperary could Shannon, not be. Shannon, you see, it's the west. The Is that extreme it? Extreme West, Canada. Is that it? I think. <laughs> yeah, I think. I think it's. It's. I have gotten a mongrel of an accent too because I lived in Cork for eight years. Yeah. And now I've been up here for like six years. It so. goes in. If you've any ear at all, where you live yeah. goes in. And it, uh, it it just does. And then people, oh, the worst thing that can ever happen is people say to me, "You lost your accent quick enough." And I'm like, <laughs> I most certainly did not. How dare you? How all of a sudden, you turn. <laughs> oh, you turn on Michael Collins so oh, straight away. Oh God, yeah, it's full full Collins. Yeah, I was so. there. I was in Tipperary on on Clan Mill on. Uh, on Thursday night I was opening a show for two two lads they, they have a brilliant kind of sketch comedy thing going on but they just started their first ever live show the two Johnnies and their stuff is kind of wild and real country but yeah. I went I, I just I walked on stage just like a normal gig anywhere in the world but something happened something actually just clicked in my brain and suddenly I turned into one of Dunbelievables inside three seconds what? my voice just changed it was just something about I don't know when I heard it back I mean, there was a few people in the audience wearing like Tipperary jerseys and stuff like these were proper country people something yeah. in the air made my accent go back 20 years go, oh that's well that's kind of cool in a way it's like because you, you know there's, I, I love oh god I love Cork accents and I love I used to love getting off the train when I first moved up to Dublin I used to love getting off the train at Kent Station and just listening drinking in the music in the air um, it is a funny one though isn't it it is it, that's the, that's my biggest bugbear though in voiceovers because yeah. cause, you know it's beyond my reel and stuff that yeah, I am yeah. from Cork so that you know if you need Munster that I, it is there um and whenever I go in and they are, they want yeah. a, a more monster leaning to whatever I do, it's always a comedic script. And I'm like, how dare you? We're very serious folk. Very wise. Don't be laughing. So. Well, you, there, I found there's two types of people in Cork, though. There are very jovial, but there's some very, very serious people as well. Like There can be an intensity, I think, yeah. And, and you know, I don't know where that thing about the, the chip comes from, the chip on the shoulder. But, I mean, enough people have observed it that we must take on board that there's something there. I don't know. Is there I think though? it's that we're amazing and that people just don't realise it. So okay, there's a yeah. bitterness to yeah. that. But there's, uh, there's a, there definitely is is something there because I I found I met a lot of people who wanted to be perfectionists when I lived in Cork because I study people something ridiculous probably in, in a, almost a creepy level like but there was something like you take the likes of Ron Nogara yeah or Roy Keane two of the more famous I've heard, people I've heard of them yeah and but, uh, yeah, bo- and both of them. of them are two of the most <laughs> intensely serious people when it comes to perfection they're also there but they're at the top of their field I they're, suppose they're, yeah, they're, yeah. They're, and I don't think you get to those positions without being slightly I mean for want of a better word obsessive I yeah. think you have to eat drink sleep what you're doing so I guess those are two but you know you know, cream will rise to the top and Cork will be at the bottom of the country but <laughs> geographically and Tara Flynn being very, very intense as well very uh, intense I am very intense and you're I one of the sounder to... people though oh, aren't you oh off no don't no, say you, that no, you, no oh, honest to god I mean never say I would skirt like around this issue if you weren't in any way sound like you oh, know what I mean oh stop no because it is embarrassing and that sort of thing is. but it's also like I feel like if that becomes a discussion then it's sort of people are just waiting for you to not be sound oh, or you yeah, have a bad yeah, yeah, day yeah. and people go see I told you it was a big fake see a big fake just like her accent she's a big <laughs> fake see oh ugh, fake so I, I do try I suppose though in, in, in work I try to be I try not to not to be a dose not to knock people down or yeah. whatever and I, I'll never forget it like when we did um, 
we did a thing, and myself and um, Dermot, um, who did, uh, we did a racist B&B and a few of those videos together, and we did a thing that was called uh, Are You a Prick? And it was about reality TV. Yeah. It was about those those kind of hidden camera shows. Yes, which, yeah, yeah. You know, they, I think the lads at the time were really frustrated. They, they were getting pilots and stuff off the ground, and they were writing really good stuff, and it wasn't seemed to get anywhere. Yeah. They were going, all you have to do is stick a camera on someone who the premise is, are you an idiot? Are you a dick? Are you a prick? Yeah. We went, so we, we'll make this thing, Are You a Prick? Just taking the piss out of... Um, uh, hidden camera shows because we were I, I, the lads in particular were frustrated by them at the time and then because I I was the person in it pretending to be the person doing the gotcha okay yeah yeah, said, yeah oh you're taking the piss out of a specific personality and I was like oh no 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 and I said and the, the way to test that is go back and look right and see, yeah yeah if you didn't change the script at all could one of the lads hopped in and done it yeah and it's like yes is the answer and uh, but people went oh but people want to see they want to see meanness yeah they, they want do. to see meanness they do yeah but because I, I had a, you know long dark hair at the time and they, they people decided it was a specific person being taken down and it I can swear on the fucking bible I don't even believe in but I can swear it wasn't a personality at all it was the fact that the only was, shows that seemed to be getting made were hidden camera ones and yeah. we, we were more mourning the dearth of writing and the meanness of the premise the meanness yeah. of the premise is like I know a thing you don't know the thing <laughs> I'm gas <laughs> <laughs> and it's like that's literally the premise of the video yeah. It's not about a personality, it's about the premise. <laughs> so I'll never forget that because my whole, my everything I try, my whole, my whole, my whole. Uh, my whole uh, everything I try to do is is to, to knock. The only people I want to knock are people who are knocking other people. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And have yeah, money yeah. to do it. So um, I did love that race B&B one. Though. It was absolutely <laughs> on you. the money. It was so good. Thank you, it was good. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a weird one you kind of then when you take on any social issues or anything like that and I took it I only try to take on things that affect me directly because I feel like it's not my place otherwise yeah. and I'm not a politician and I'm not an elected representative and the broader your discussion gets I've discovered to my to my uh, detriment it's kind of catch 22 you you comment on some social issues and oh Jesus yeah. oh Jesus oh Jesus and then suddenly you're, you're not only taken down by trolls but everyone wants to debate you and it's amazing though yeah. and they demand it yeah and I'm like well I'm not I'm not being paid for this I'm not an elected representative I made that video or this selection of videos mm. uh, because I believed in something or, or it affected people or I know or myself directly and so I have experience of it but then I have people saying you haven't said a word about Irish water I noticed oh Christ like, almighty yeah. well and I'm not going to I know I, I have a lot to say to it priv- about it privately a lot to say about it but I don't want to get into those and then so then it was sort of you know, I'd go in and I'd do an interview and you talk or, or yeah. just something like good week bad week lovely fun gig and just taking the piss out of the week how dare you go on news talk and I'm like oh my god it's unbelievable what people feel that you owe them yeah because they've engaged in 10 seconds of you on in something well, well they, but, she owes me everything I've right become, now I've become visible on something so suddenly they, they see me as a politician or something and so I've I've really I've really pulled back actually even if it's something I feel very strongly about I won't comment on it's it it's not again. worth the hassle I'll comment on repeal and stuff like yeah. that I'll comment on racism because you know well there's um, no talking around family there's stuff plus and there's no argue with that no, you know what I mean you can't sure. like you can't go it's not like a matter of opinion it's a matter of fact I'm really, not like. go- I'll say things like I'm not going to discuss that with you today I'm, I'm not like I'm not I'm honestly not on for discussing that today mm. like it's not my fucking job so uh, and then I'll get oh I see shutting down discussion <laughs> yeah, like, no you're no. free you're free to discuss it I've got stuff to do today like. but if we were in a pub and you were sitting on my shoulder going eh, and we, eh, me, I'm allowed to go I'm going to move over here and that's the thing none of them ever would <laughs> they never would they oh, man, never it's would it's so funny anyway I can't wait to get paid for it all <laughs> Oh, you brought hobnobs. Outstanding. I did because I got the date wrong, but people don't know about soundness, is that I got the date wrong and Tom moved things around to be here for me yeah. on this particular day. And so I, I said, give me your favourite chocolate and I'll bring it. And he said, not mad on the chocolate. I enjoy a hobnob. I could take or leave chocolate because most chocolate is shite. <gasps> no, a lot of chocolate is just... That's it's, true. It's only dancing around the issue. It's not really Especially chocolate. when you taste a proper bit of good chocolate. Stop You're it, like, the stop. rest of it now is oh, just trousers. I'm in heaven. It is trousers. <laughs> It's chocolate trousers. Honestly, like, what, do you, have you been to Maynooth rate, lately? No, not for. Do you have any plans for, to go to Maynooth? I was in Maynooth actually. Two I'm months being in no way endorsed by what I'm about to say next, but go you on. have to go to the Belgian chocolatiers on the main street. Okay. 
That it, sounds fancy. It'd be worth just going out there. Okay, I might. I might. It is the greatest coffee. <laughs> it is, you'll, be, you'll be ruined, is what I will. Terrafin, you'll be ruined. Oh, you'll be destroyed. Stop. I will. They're, I will they, love it. I they, love dark chocolate. They've got this this uh, glass wall into the chocolatier's making area and they're Drooling making listeners. chocolate inside it knowing that you're just going to start licking the window <gasps> yeah it's the most ludicrous place oh no I'd love that no I'd yeah. love that yeah so yeah we'll avoid the chocolates hobnobs all the way hobnobs I love cho- hobnobs you can't go wrong with a good hobnob no it's true. They have the stability of maybe, you know, a digestive, but at the same time, there's a bit more class because they got nutty stuff inside them. <laughs> you could even say health. Health. Yeah. Mm, Hop nuts. Mm, mm, yeah. Fibre. Yeah. <laughs> and delicious, delicious sugar. And the, you had another another fantastic sketch. Was it the Armageddon? Armageddon, yeah. It was I love that one. One. Yeah, I right, love, Kevin. I like stuff that has maybe two two layers, of, but it's not too wanky either. Like, you still kept it funny. Well, that was our aim. And that's, I, I try, I mean, it's not always successful, especially if you're passionate about something and mm. you're angry and the humour comes from the anger. It's not always possible to be funny. I know. But um, I, I, that is the aim. That Because otherwise, why am I contributing to the discussion? It's like... Uh, that's that's my for want of a better word mm. superpower so it's like we all have to use our superpowers so if I join in a discussion I have to in some way, way make it funny yeah. or you know because I'm not a lawyer or I'm not a you know constitutional expert or you know so if I'm yeah. talking about a referendum why am I talking about it <laughs> yeah. so got to bring some levity to the situation so we, we were adamant that it'd be as funny as possible um and just sending up the ridiculousness of certain arguments like like the the argument we were sending up in that was wasn't anyone's beliefs or anything mm. like that even though we might not share them trying to respect those but also going the argument that anything in your life will change yeah is, yeah, is the yeah. maddest one that's the yeah yeah yeah, yeah so that, that was the, the one we sent up I loved it because I did a people actually took it do people t- have you found people take them sometimes seriously yeah. they totally missed the point yeah like. yeah yeah, and you just want to go shout at them, going, "Listen, you take bollocks!" Or, or they just want, like with racist B and B, they just want a chance to go and be racist, or, okay, or to say, yeah. "Oh, look at these social justice warriors shutting down free speech because we should be able to hear out people's beliefs." Hear out people's beliefs yeah. about racism? Sorry, lad, no, yeah. Yeah. no. I mean, and that's where it's like essentially being allowed to just go around punching people well, just because you go, "Well, it's just free. It's a free country." I we felt live in. like it. Yeah, no, exactly. it's still wrong to punch somebody. Like, yeah, you know what I mean? it's like when you, especially when you're in the position of privilege. You, you know, we have white privilege. Yeah, and a lot of people go, oh, oh, "This again, this privilege nonsense." Oh. It's like, yeah, no, we have it. And yeah, it's we do. Worth yeah, examining, yeah, yeah. and you know, it doesn't mean that other things aren't crap in our lives, but we're less likely to be shot in the back and yeah. and have the person who did it not face justice. You know, that's that, uh, mad. Yeah. <laughs> it's ludicrous. But see, I suppose we don't, yeah, I suppose we don't really run into it too often. So people don't have enough. Well, they, they don't. don't. They don't. And that's but they'll still okay. shoot their mouth off online about it. That's like. what. That's my issue with it. It's like, it's fine not to know you have privilege. And it's fine to, to go, oh, I'm tired of hearing about it. But you have that luxury. You know, yeah. they have that luxury of not having to talk about it. They haven't been shouted at on the street or, or suffered a million microaggressions all day. Yeah. It could be anything from... You know, sexual innuendo, anything like that, things that we don't even think yeah, yeah, yeah. about because we have white privilege and we're protected from it. But men and women of colour are subjected to that sort of stuff all day long. Now, does that mean that there aren't, uh, you know, uh, other reasons that people are persecuted? Mm. Of course there are. And I think one of the least spoken about uh, persecutions in Ireland is, is racism against travellers. Yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. it's just rarely discussed. So, but so this isn't to erase anybody else. It's just what I have direct experience of because I live with, you know, my husband's black. Yeah. So I, I see how it affects him, and and I've just tried to inform myself a bit better and learn about my about the things I don't see because of my own privilege. You'd know too that Carlos from America by his amazing teeth. <laughs> and they, his amazing teeth, his great glorious. eyes. And, yeah. And his American accent. I suppose that's <laughs> Well, you never know these days with the amount of kids that have American accents just from watching TV. It's true, it's so. true. And I, I find mine leaning that way. That's the other thing, living with an American in the house. The, 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 a lot of that creeps You haven't said things like trash can, have you? I, but you see, I said those when I was little. Oh, did you? I used to say sweater and they'd say, it's your jumper, you, you mean? <laughs> did you say sweater? Yeah, yeah. Where sweater, do you think you got sweater garbage. From? Because... Um, Tilly. Can it... Mum? Oh, you're, yeah, yeah, Jesus, yeah. your mother, yeah. Aluminum. Aluminum. All the things I had to beat out of myself, but I still, every time I go to say that bit at the side of the road, is it a sidewalk? Is it a footpath? <laughs> is it a pavement? <laughs> we'll never know, but I'm about to say flavement. Flavement. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because I'm going through all of them in my head going, which is the right one? Which is the one? 
that oh, I Jesus, learned when yeah. I was small and which is the one I'm going to be laughed at for. I know, I thought Side I had a tough path. with a Kilkenny mother. <laughs> but Jesus. It wasn't tough, but it is, it is interesting. So I used to say those things anyway. Yeah. Right. And got slagged on mercy. Of course you would, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Did, you didn't stick A at the end of your, at any point. You, or, well, your mother wasn't living in that part. No, of it, no, she? she was. No, that's pretty much everywhere, but no, she wasn't. And it was only a, a sort of a flavour. So she's okay, back, full yeah, West yeah. Cork again now. Okay, yeah, yeah, right, yeah. right, right, right. She was only there five years. But she'd only recently come back when she got married, so... Fair play to her. She's still there. West Cork nipped off to Canada. Nipped off to Canada at the age of 15. Has she relations over there or something? Yeah, she had a couple... uh, um, She... Yeah, because Gran had... Gran was from one of those families of 10, and I think five or six of them ended up in Toronto. Right. So a lot of mums, aunts and uncles were there. Okay, right. And first cousins and things. So a lot of my extended family's in Toronto. Yeah. Ah, Because of the... The, the size of the family and how many of them went over there yeah Jesus yeah so uh, yeah she lied about her age got a job in a bank and um, and was did a lot of Irish dancing and ended up dancing in Carnegie Hall in New York on St. Patrick's Day wow yeah that's class yeah yeah that's the it Mary Flynn it's, story it's good though for broadening the mind too because I've met like and I think that even passes on a generation. I was only talking with a mate of mine the other day, and he was saying about his old man has never left, nor his parents are. Yeah, they've never. I, That's well, a lot of people. It is you know, a lot of people. People either emigrated, emigrated, and yeah. stayed away, or never left. Because my know? my old pair kind of moved around because Dad was welding around Europe, basically. Oh, wow. it's, it's, I mean, welding it's, around Europe is yeah. such a book I want to read. Is it? It sounds actually, welding yeah. Around I Europe. never actually said it out loud before. Oh. Yeah, it's welding around Europe. It's, he had some good stories about it's, Germany. It's hot, like. It's hot. Welding around Europe. <laughs> it's, it's all in there. <laughs> it's practical and sexy. Maybe, maybe, you know, maybe he could just hand over his notes <laughs> to you. You'd write it. In, uh, <laughs> no, the next Fifty Shades it. thing. Yeah. Could be Fifty Shades, yeah. Welding around Europe. With stuff getting mended. Mm. And, you know, nothing turns people on better than something fixed. Oh. oh. <laughs> you just suddenly get hotter down here in the, oh, the stag's eh? God, yeah. It's, uh... So, but he did, so he went around in the stories Yeah, so, oh my good God, he had this one about... The amount of times in Germany he seemed to end up in glory hole bar- in toilets. He <laughs> I says, bet. God, yes, of course. He said Germany was just, he says it was just like, no, obviously nothing like Ireland or the UK when it came to how just relaxed they were about their yeah, sexuality. And they were all a bit mad too because they were kind of bucking the trend obviously since the Second World War. They wanted to show they were cool and fun. Yeah. So just walking around naked and stuff like that was a thing. So it was like, oh, all right, okay, fair enough. This is, yeah. So, but you can definitely tell by the time then I suppose we came along it was nothing weird to be able to ask him a question about Sweden or something yeah, go well yeah. I'll tell you about Sweden oh that's but superb. do you know what I mean there was definitely a, like obviously because people might be listening to this going what the fuck is he talking about there was no obviously way of finding out about these things unless you had the the full Britannica inside in the, the sitting room like you didn't find out stuff and I remember we had ATK <laughs> ATK what had happened to the rest I don't know I think it never got bought because <laughs> you know you buy it in installments my mother used to sell them <laughs> that's why we what had it you? she used to sell them so that's what, what we treat. had them, yeah. Oh, we had all the books with the. Um, oh, they looked the business now inside in the. And I, I only found them the other day. She had actually put oh them up God, into they the were attic. Fabulous! They were fabulous. It was. I, I have this fascination with always going to dogs, the different types of dogs. I don't know why, but D, I can remember. But it was, it was handy for. Like, I, I don't know if it benefited me in the long run. Yeah, I suppose I went on to be an engineer, but the two girls definitely benefited. They went on to be proper scientisty people, like and stuff like that. So I suppose. They were handy in that, but yeah, we had the full the full shot, and we had the children's you botanica are so as well. So lucky! Oh my god! But we didn't really realize it. But now, when I think back, oh yeah, the neighborhood kids used to come over because that was the internet. Facts. Yeah, that was the internet. That it was, was the you'd internet. Have to, yeah. you know, go to you know whichever letter it was, look it up under there in the index, and the encyclopedia would have it. And yeah, it's very hard to explain if people, yeah, you know, uh, only only remember internet times. But it really was. And how quickly people have completely forgot that there was. Only 15 years ago, no internet we're talking about, really. Like, yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? And, and yeah, and that, and that, exactly like that. If you had to research something, or you just even had a, you know, a niggling question, yeah. you'd have to just hope you happened upon someone mm. who might have the information, or go and research it formally. <laughs> ask, it, ask it in a month's time when it comes back to you again. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. That's Unbelievable. Amazing. I was looking at, I didn't realise you were one of the founding members of the New List. I knew yeah. you had an involvement with it, but I didn't know... 
Yeah. But you're one of the founders of the new list. Yeah, so I was going to the improv a lot. I ended up joining yeah. the improv eventually, but I was going so much that I ended up doing the door for them. <laughs> um, I love the idea of you going, not tonight. Not tonight. Yeah, not tonight. No, no, not you. Not you. No. <laughs> uh, no, just taking the money on the door. But it was, um, yeah, I was working with Michelle Reed on theatre shows. Michelle, who's still in the improv, of course, and she was a founder member of the improv. This is a long-winded way to say. So I was on the door a lot, and I was in, in the international quite a bit, and going to other gigs. Yeah. And so I knew Anne Gildee from that and Sue Collins uh, was in the improv as well. Yeah. And so I knew Anne and Sue and we all met at a party, the three of us, and there was a guitar and we started messing, just messing, making up songs. And we said, well, we meet next week and just formalise this a bit. And Anne, who's, uh, you know, always great, she's a great business head. And yeah. she just went, you know what I'll do? She said, it'll really make us right. I'll book... Um, can make us write the stuff better. It'll okay, put you quickly. under pressure, right? Well, yeah, put us under pressure. Well, she booked she booked a, a, an open spot in the international. So, absolutely breaking it. Deadly. We went on and we just did three songs and and it all sort of snowballed from there. So, yeah, it was brilliant. It was you know, so much fun. But it went, it actually went quite big, quite fast. And I, I had been focusing so much on acting at the time. Yeah. It was just such a round of gigging and things. It, well, it ended up not being for me at yeah, the time, yeah, yeah. definitely not. Um, and it really was it, was, it was a real snowball effect. It just whooshed into successful existence. So, which was a lovely thing to be part of. Yeah, too. you almost never hear of that. But yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> Mad things happened to us. Like, we were, we used to do this thing where we'd go, we'd go and do songwriter nights, not to take the piss out of songwriters in any way, but what we'd do is we'd go and do songwriter nights so that we'd see if we just wore the dresses and the glasses and the, the whole bit and went on as the Nulas in yeah. character and just did the songs as if they were straight songs, straight, not funny songs. Yeah, yeah. Would people still laugh anyway? And they did. Did they? Because so that, that was our okay, litmus yeah. test. That right. was our test. Because often what's levelled at musical comedy is, well, should people know where to laugh because there's a rhyme? Or yeah, then it ends and yeah. you get a round of applause. So we thought, no, we're going to really push this, really test the comedy aspect, really test the humour. So, and we did that in the Baggett Inn one night and there was this guy there and he went... Um, this was in July, nearly the end of July. Yeah. And he said, uh, oh, I'm from Edinburgh and uh, I will pay for your flights to go over. And Jesus. just we said, but we can't get a slot. We can't go and do the fringe because there's, you know, everything's all booked up. And, yeah. the, and he said, just go and network and get as many gigs as you can. And he said, I'll be there uh, for some of the time. So I'll come and see you doing it. And so he said, I, I want to, you know, I want to see you do well. So. Right. But it was like, wow, are you serious? What's Jesus. the catch? And he said, no catch. Honestly, he said, I just want to... Th that was really funny. And I just think if I can help in a way and I, I can get the flights for you and I'll just get the flights. And so we ended up in the fringe. But we did. We did make good on it. We did walk. We knocked on doors. We begged for yeah. gigs. We begged to do Late in Life. Absolutely begged Karen Corrin at the Gilded Balloon to yeah. do Late in Life. And she was like, well, you know, but you're, you're a brand new act. There's no way. Absolutely no way. So we kept going back and yeah. eventually she said, or she kind of, I remember she kind of put down her pen and looked up at us and started laughing, just went, all right, she said, I'll give you an audition. Okay, so in Jesus. the middle of the morning, you know, everyone with their Edinburgh hangovers. Yeah. So we kind of like two techies from the Gilded Balloon, Karen and a couple of, you know, people's managers and things. We just did a couple of songs with them and they said, okay, you can go on. Yeah. So our last night there of the week we were there, we went on and did Late in Live. So... Jesus. You know, hosted by Phil Kay and Vic and Bob were in the audience course, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And we were like, oh my God, this is mad. Because we'd probably done our first gig a month before that. That's amazing. So you almost, I mean, there, I've heard of a few, but it, but the, the thing was, I suppose you were probably coming at it the right way too, was that you actually, the fact that you got through an audition, you weren't messers either. Like, no, you know we what were, I mean? Like, we worked so hard. We met and we rehearsed all the time. We kept writing. If someone had an idea for a song, they'd bring it and we'd rework it together. Um, you know, we we worked, we worked, we worked and worked and worked. Yeah. As you do hear some of of late, you've heard of a couple. It's only kind of I don't. Maybe it's always happened, but a few people have kind of been offered. They've gotten good positions and stuff, and you're like, are you, are you sure they're right? How did that? Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm sure that happens in every business. Like, but yeah. you're kind of still going. But then it would seem that what they are is topical right now and it needs to be happen, happen or whatever and you kind of go oh right but it also does happen that people burn out and like I mean that probably probably is part of what happened to me in the Nulas is like I didn't have the comedy chops I didn't feel yeah. I was a good enough writer and I kind of wondered why I was there and I thought maybe I was better as an actor and all that so but what we all did have was we had performance we, were, we had five or six years maybe even more uh, of experience 
before the noodles yes. happened and that yeah, was just yeah. lightning in a bottle where the three of us came together yeah. and it all just sort of happened but and you can't make that happen but I do think it happens where someone is as you say there's something topical or there's some reason why they yeah. get a lot of press suddenly it goes whoosh but they don't have even if they have the talent yeah. they don't have that you know it takes stamina it takes, does it takes I always miles and describe miles it like a, like a rugby player's cauliflower ears they can't they're now at a stage once you have you have <laughs> yeah. a cauliflower almost temperament now cauliflower heart <laughs> <laughs> okay that's the name of your next book Do you got cauliflower, cauliflower heart cauliflower heart <laughs> not yet come back come back little one you go fly around until you got a cauliflower heart then you come back to me and we'll talk <laughs> Because fame hurts. <laughs> cauliflower heart. That has to be the name of your next book. It has to be the name. Yeah, but that's exactly it. Until you've had those scars and, and they've sort of scarred over. And yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely it's definitely true. And some people do manage to, they just on the fly, they get that fame and, and they haven't got the experience and they manage to cobble it together. They yeah. get a good enough team with them. But I do I do feel almost sorry for them because it's a really vulnerable position. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, it's really vulnerable and... And then people start. And then people start going. See, oh, the oh, they, they, they were a flash in the pan. It's like, no, they're probably are really great, which is why you liked them last year. Yeah. They're really great, yeah. but they're being they're under too harsh a spotlight too soon. Did you always were you were you funny with voices in school? No, I was not funny at all in school. I was so introverted, uh, so shy. Right. I was probably I probably was bolshy. All right. I was probably. I was vocal, you know, if, if I didn't agree with something or something like mm. that. But no kidding, says you. But I really didn't think I was funny at all. It wasn't really, I mean, even with the new list, it wasn't till I started doing the improv yeah. that I started to feel funny. And that was maybe 1999. Yeah, I, I just, um, that really opened up stuff for me. It opened yeah. up a writing side of my brain to gave you confidence in a writing side of my brain because improv is like you're, you're basically taking the lid off your head and yeah, letting yeah. your subconscious out. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Here it is. <laughs> a scary little animal running uh, around the room. Yeah, yeah, a very scary animal. And you're kind of like, uh, it, that's why people, I'm a terrible giggler on stage at the improv and yeah. people are like, oh my God, laughing at yourself. And I'm like, I'm not laughing at myself. I'm going, where <laughs> the fuck <laughs> is it? did that come out of? <laughs> And I'm just going, holy shit. It's like, oh, it's more like one of those fear laughs. Like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, like, yeah. Why did I say that? Or what does that reveal about me? And you kind of just have to just keep going. Yeah. But I can't help but laugh in shock. <laughs> That's what it is. Your voices are, you've been an ever present kind of voice in people's lives. E- you you reveal this just the night you gave us. Because that's why I was saying you are sound. Oh, stop. Because, no, but you gave us a proper workshop chat on, on voiceover work. Yeah. For no reason really other than just going look don't well, be don't be going about it the wrong way this is the way you go about well, it well why not why not share I was very lucky at it for you know and it, and it earned me quite a bit of money for a, a, and a short amount of time but 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 there was a career in it for a while there doesn't seem to be the same anymore or maybe it's just I'm not flavour of the month anymore which happens and you got to be realistic about it which I tried to convey in the workshop like don't you know don't put all your eggs in this basket yes, but you yeah, can yeah. have some work out yeah. of it but um yeah, I just thought I'd been so lucky from it. Why not share share some of the luck? Because yeah. you can I think greed is an awful, oh, is an awful. F- speaking of scary little monsters, I yeah. Think but they, I got it was funny because I got brought in to do a for a phone ad. They wanted a trial. It was one I never heard of the way they, they did it. They wanted to actually hear what two of us sounded against each other. Oh so God! Going, no, now the guy was waiting downstairs. He, it wasn't like we were having a fight or anything yeah. with our voices. But um, <laughs> they'd said they'd said to me, look as totally neutral Tom we know you can do strong either way so as you've probably heard a million times um, utterly neutral so I kept it I mean as neutral as what means as neutral as possible there's no such thing there's yes. no such thing yeah. it is, there is some sort of an accent there like, there has you know to be I mean? yeah. like a, a French person going to hear that and go that's this is an Irish person yeah. you know what I mean but of course but it was so funny because the guy was I, I want to hear no accents Tom and it was I'd been advised outside going when they say neutral Tom they're going to mean South Dublin yeah but the guy had been so specific in that don't go anywhere with your South Dublin one or don't because he doesn't hear his own I guess you know and so that's his own and that's what he hears as no accent so they didn't go for me anyway 
but the lad that they were, I was fine. They, but the thing was, they paid me. They went, can we pay you to come in and try? I went, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, fine. See, that used to be how things were. It used to be if you came in and you, you did a demo, and sometimes what they mm. do is you do a demo like that for a particular product or company, and then they would pay you for that time, yeah. which is very fair and kind. And then if they use it, because mm. they would almost always use that take, yeah. they, they used it, then they'd pay you for the usage. And it's just getting harder and harder to get paid for stuff now. Oh, and it, yeah. This isn't just in our industry. This is in everyone I'm talking to, musicians and, you know, even people doing more uh, cor- corporate or office type work. Yeah. It just seems like the eternal intern system mm-hmm. seems to be in yeah. place. And it's... It's great for your exposure, you know. It's great for exposure. Yeah. I always now say, if I want exposure, I'll streak down O'Connell Street. <laughs> Give me several different <laughs> kinds of exposure. You know, you can dive from exposure. That's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it was funny because when I heard the ad, I was driving out, uh, into the town a couple of days later and the ad was out straight away. And the guy that they picked... It was like, the line was Don't say don't say that's so or okay. something or other, right? And it was like that is so and it was like, Oh my god, I could have done that accident and you asked for that. I I, know. But it was it was clear then I remembered what you had said, it was and what I was like neutral will never be neutral. Like it's what they have in their head. It's what they and, have in their head. Yeah, exactly. And you know, and that's that's part of just learning the the business side of it, I mm. guess. And that's uh, that's always been fascinating to me. Because then you're into it's not just making a noise or you you're into people and what people think and mm. and how people interact and how people speak which is fucking amazing yeah yeah but you have been who you were the phone voice and you still are you're you're you, which phone voice are you now i was on o2 i was on o2 right for, well that was in existence first it was digiphone and then it was o2 ah. uh, yeah so i was you have no new messages i was that person that was yeah. class Class, class. Class. But everyone sort of went, Oh my god, you get paid every time you, you pick <laughs> yeah. up a like, That would be amazing. That would be amazing. <laughs> no, so I you know, it was a really nice gig to have because it um you know it's it's lovely to have a regular gig in, in an irregular business. Yeah. So uh yeah, that was I was really grateful for that. Um so other voices people might recognise I was Molly the Morbeg in Morbegs. Oh yes, the yeah. Morbegs, yeah. Yeah. And um, before that I did so I did a bit for kids television which I absolutely loved. So there was more bags and before that there was a thing called uh Rimini Riddle. Which, yes, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that was puppets as well. So I played a really small little puppet on there. <laughs> His name was Leo and it, we used to record it on a Saturday morning so Friday night they'd go straight to bed. <laughs> yeah, it was like <laughs> You say doing Leo, you know, playing Leo was like doing an opera or something. Unbelievable! Yeah, it was mad. That was class. Have you ever been? Was there ever a point where you go, I can't do that voice? Um, I try and be honest at a, like an audition stage or something, or or if I've been booked to do something and I really feel like because if they're sort of saying, you know. Uh, Go harder and louder and push it. My voice will just crack. Yeah. And, you know, I know it's limitation. So I'll just say, I actually think, you know, I'm not sure I can deliver. Yeah. And it's like all you want to do in that sort of situation, because, you know, you're you're a professional person with a client. Yes. And you want the client to be happy. So sometimes I, maybe twice ever though. Yeah. But I have twice gone, I don't think I'm the voice for this gig. Okay. Um, and I'd rather say, like, if I don't I know, do an yeah, accent, yeah. if I don't do an accent, I'll say I don't do that accent. Because I'd rather they got the person, or like I said to you in the yeah. workshop, if you have a cold, ring them and tell them you have the cold, and then they've the choice, they've the, yes, the option yeah, to recast. Yeah. It's going to kill you to, to I know, but you don't want to make the gig good guy. Like. But if you go in, waste that hour of studio time, yeah. they might not use you again anyway, and so it's better to just go. Okay, listen, guys, I have a cold. It sounds like this your call you know and then so sometimes you lose that gig but then at they'll least they know you're a, a professional for you, yeah, yeah they, they, you know you're not going to waste their time it's a it's a funny old game isn't it have you heard ones and gone because there's all the time but I'm sure people hear mine and go oh um, but yeah I, I sub, I, you know you want to be voices are subjective people. I suppose but there's a funny there's a funny one like down at home the, the local radio station when people choose I remember it being said to me, would you would you do one for, I think it was Headstones or something. Yeah. <laughs> I went, yeah, yeah, whatever you want, yeah. And um, I'd heard the one they'd been using for years, and it was just it was just the lady that owned it, owned the place. Yeah. And she was like, hello there. And it was, there was something almost endearing about That's it. it very, like, I think those I'm are sure quite this, charming. This will actually fit in if I come on and go, hi, Odwar's Headstones. You know? <laughs> are you dead or planning to die in the next six to eight weeks? If so... <laughs> We have granite in all shapes and forms. Granite, granite, granite. <laughs> Bring your granny to granite, granite, granite. <laughs> 
Yes. You you weren't the you weren't the caramel bunny. Were I you? was, I was, but only were once, you? and only in Ireland. And so people get very excited about that. But Miriam Margulies, I believe, is the the rabbit we all know and love. I don't know the, the many ads down through the years. I did the uh, an Irish version of the rabbit uh, once in the nineties. Yeah. So hey there, you know. Good hey lord, there, Mr. Squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know. Yeah. There are there are blokes in their mid 30s right now listen to this going good Jesus it, it gets a reaction I remember when I was still on the dating scene it was sort of like you know even if the date wasn't going well that was something guaranteed to stir some excitement which is you, really sick you pull out the bunny but, card yeah why not well, for me about pulling out the bunny card it would just come up even if we you know because I mean if we both sort of checked out and suddenly there'd be interest and I'm like oh god really the fucking rabbit <laughs> uh, but um yeah so uh yeah so yeah but it, it wasn't like it wasn't something I did regularly or for a long time mm. or anything like that that is still uh, you know an iconic voice and I was just I was well, the best bits about it actually was um was getting given the tapes of the various ads again this was pre-internet yeah. so um getting the tapes or pre also having all having access to the internet so I, I got tapes from the client and I was able to go home and just watch the ads over and over again all those yeah. animated ads and listen to that voice just to try and get it right that's brilliant that was that was cool like as research goes that yeah, was cool that's cool <laughs> you didn't get any free chocolate did you unfortunately not no. what I got paid though so fair enough got you can go buy chunk of chocolate yeah, exactly there was a friend of mine it, it was actually down in Cork as well he was from Rochestown he could do you as uh-huh. the bunny uh, Rid- no it was ridiculous he had a, quite an effeminate tone anyway when he spoke but he stood behind me one day I snuck up to him he was outside a bar in Rochestown and he was actually stood there and he more or less did you as the, as oh, the bunny mad it's creepy to turn around and see the <laughs> six foot two man with a beard <laughs> he was able to do that well, it's quite the skill. He should definitely get that down on tape, though. But and your two books are absolutely—you—they were class. Oh, thank you. Great, a great name. As soon as I saw giving out yards, oh. it's like, yeah. <laughs> well, it's what we do. Um, yeah, I wanted to, you know, uh, sort of. One is called Your Grand, and the other is called yes. Giving Out Yards. So they're kind of, if you pardon the expression, they're kind of bookends to each other. Yeah. One is about positivity and really having a very warm look at at sort of if if, if Irish women, what with the Magdalene laundries and everything else that happened. You you know, and the whole yeah. not having any bodily autonomy. If we can put up with crap, and you know, but it's very inclusive, and it's even yeah. at the beginning saying this book is definitely for men because it's like you're in it with us, and you yeah, know, so yeah, it's yeah, all yeah. that very inclusive stuff. I'm very positive, and then the other one is like, right, what are we giving out about? Like that was grand. This is not grand. So, I get you. Yeah, 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 it was good fun to really good fun to write them. I loved it. I loved writing. Does those. it come naturally to you? Like, no, it's it's very hard work. Yeah, um, it's something I have. I'm, I hope I'm getting better at just through writing daily. I'll try and write something every day, um, but I hope so. I hope I'm improving, but it's definitely something that I find uh, very satisfying. Yeah, but really daunting too. And and it's just such a volume of work, like the the hours that go into a book and the editing of it, and all of that. And it's like that's why that's why somebody said you know just. It, Everyone, everyone has a first draft in them. It's just getting back in the chair and keeping going. Yeah. Is, you know, so it, it really is. Even pitches for TV, anything like that. I was talking to um, my husband about it, and he writes for TV, and I'm new to it, but I'm I'm hoping to pitch some stuff. And I said, "Oh my God, you know, I wrote this pitch, and I just don't think it's great." And he was like, "But you," he said, "You're not just not finished it, right? Said, yeah, keep, yeah. We're finding it. Keep working. I keep thinking about it. Keep." He said, he said, you know, nothing happens just by one draft or one plonking yes, of ideas yeah, on the page. Yeah, yeah. He said, the reason, the, the only reason people end up getting things made is because they put the work in. And I went, oh, that good was... advice. <laughs> yeah, and that's, that's class though, having, having Carl, because yeah, you know, he, he can t- tap you on the shoulder and go, no, no, you're a grand. Like, this is, you're a grand. Yeah, you're you know, grand. But, but this is... You know, this is look. Just keep but, going. Yeah, Stop keep, being lazy. Keep at it, like, yeah, there's something here. Don't be lazy about it. Make it good. You did, and you did. <laughs> I was driving home one night. Um, you should be on the radio more because I was listening to. You. <gasps> Thank you. It was. I was foul in foul humor because the gig got pulled or whatever. As we've all been to pull mm-hmm, gigs or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it was like a Friday night, and I was dying of a cold, and I did not oh, need one to be of those. out. Oh, of the, it was over. Stop your poor thing. And it was just Arab, just giving out and just being grumpy and everything, and whacked on. And it was. Um, it was Radio 1 
and it was Colm O'Regan's oh Colm O'Regan wants a word you, you were doing the voice there was, it was you and Paul Tylak yeah it? yeah we're real oh that's a lovely I gig I love word, wordplay like I that I do too it's such a fun gig to be on because we've got all that all the wordplay so you really are learning because the experts are on yeah and you're learning from the experts and we get to ask questions if we want to and um yeah, and then Colm has written these beautiful, really tight, joke-rich scripts oh, stuff and sketches, tight, and it's it? like, oh, such such a lovely gig. And do you, I would, have you done? Because it seems to be a thing that's coming back in podcast form. I was listening to Lawrence Fishburne, couldn't get a show made, right? Lawrence Fishburne, do you know, know what I mean? What's I know, going on? I'll just tell you. He couldn't get a show made. So they had it all written and everything, and he went, you know, what we'll do, we'll do old school radio style. Yeah. And they get a million downloads per episode now. Oh, for goodness sake. I mean, so this is something that definitely... I mean, all it comes down to is a good engineer and some good actors, I suppose, and all yeah. the rest of it. Like, But yeah, I think that... I th- I, for something, I find that utterly... I will start to listen to... I know I can't remember for the ne- life of me, of course, the name of the episode or the name of the series, but it's set in, like, 40s... Or, sorry, 20s Chicago-style gangster oh, stuff. Oh, wow. But it's amazing. Would that be something... Yeah, I mean, the thing is, at the moment, I've got so much that I'm trying to write and make happen but I love radio it's yeah. one of the places I started uh, you know because the voice work um, the voice work and radio kind of go very much yeah. hand in hand and it's funny like I've been asked I've, I've done a couple of things uh, I've done a few things for Radio 4 recently not really so much in Ireland yeah. and I'm kind of going well you know if, if there isn't a space for me or if uh, people who are working there at the moment just aren't fans of me there's mm. no point getting down about that it's make it happen yourself yeah Again, that's a time factor. And again, it's it would take so many, so much effort and hard work to make it good. It's just not on the slate right now, but it's something I would love to do. And the thing with radio is, you can have a train come through your living room. Yeah, you yeah, can, yeah, yeah. You can go skiing. You yeah. can, you know, you don't have to have that budget. You just that's have to. That's the thing. Like, unless you have good bu- budgets, it looks like shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? At it least on sounds radio, it can sound amazing. amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I, I, it was, it's definitely because we, we've. Actually, we've all written a bunch of you know things yeah. or whatever, and it's it been shelved. And it was only something we talked about recently was one that we did, and it was a country based right stick. It was actually a character in it we wrote with your head is on her. <gasps> oh, yeah, I swear to God, you'd, oh, listen. you'd love her. I would love, love her. I know already. Can you can you sing? Yeah, I knew you were able to sing because this this lady in it. Uh, well, the newest. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, yeah. yeah, yeah. She jacked in basically um, her life as a country singer. <sighs> I'm in. I'm yeah. so in. Like, but she's really ballsy as hell, like, you know what I mean? But funny as hell. She gets to swear a lot in it well, as well. let's make this. But we just got to go back and just, you got to unshelve it. Yeah. And do the Carl thing and... Yeah, press on with press it. Press on. You see, the, I suppose you can get preoccupied by other things then as well, you, you can't you? You have to, you know? in a way. When other things are happening, you have to do them. Yeah. Especially if they if they pay. Um, and, well, like, for instance, I've been writing a, a novel for the last year. Have um, you? Yeah, and I'm still on draft one. But what I've did, I did, what I did was I wrote draft one. I finished it, and I'm going back to edit it now. So it's kind of a nicer because uh, there's stuff you just forget. You the inconsistencies. Yeah. Whatever. So it's not that I'm changing anything, and I'm a bit frustrated because of course the urge is to fix everything. Yeah, yeah. But you yeah. just it's just make sure it's consistent. Make sure there are no spelling mistakes. Just that kind of. But I've had to shelve it every time things came up. But things like come up are like I got to do my show at the Peacock. So, you yes, know, things yeah, like yeah. that. Um, you know, I'm doing some of the radio stuff like with Colm. So you have to then go, OK, well, you know, I don't have a deal on yeah. this book. I'm hoping to, but you just never know. So when you write yeah. something on spec, it sort of has to take. Like of course, you said, yeah, yeah. it has to be shelved for a minute. Yeah. But what you have to do then is every spare minute you have is go back. Go back as soon as the other gigs are done go back and make sure it doesn't die and are you, are you disciplined I, I'm as disciplined as I can be yeah I try. artists tend not to be like you know yeah, what I mean yeah but I think we have to I think you have to write every, I think you have to do whatever it is you do every day yes yeah, or, yeah yeah or you're just not match fit when you need it yes and that's um, and you never know when it's going to occur so it's best to kind of keep match fit all the time which do you prefer do you uh, acting or radio uh, well, I mean, a lot, lot of a lot of radio is it, acting, I suppose, and yeah, I yeah. certainly see them as the same discipline. Um, I love acting; that's my first love. And then it just turned out that I didn't believe it, or realize it, or or know it, but uh, that the comedy is an extra skill. I still apply the same rules as as yeah. for acting; that there has it has to be true. I have to believe what the character's doing, or you know, not send the character up, really live their truth, and um, and then hopefully it's it's funny. I loved it in uh, you were the it was the Irish pictorial. <laughs> <laughs> you just 
You just lost it in every scene. Yeah. It was oh the cork one, Matt the cork, cork one. Oh yeah, that was that was a, a full on. I can't take any credit. It was Barry Murphy's creation. He said, "I just see a cork woman with a hurl." I was like. I could do that, yeah. <laughs> you just end up smashing up a table or something. Smashing things, yeah. Bashing, you know, um, uh, old stereos, you know, anything. Yeah. <laughs> People. There was a bit of that, yeah. It was and quite a violent character. And what's on the go now right at the minute? The, like, finishing that draft of the yeah. novel. Um, I'm pitching a TV thing. And that, that is at such a, an early, early, early stage. Yeah. But it's looking like there's a tiny bit of interest. Um and it hopefully the show for the Abbey will come back. Oh, brilliant! So yeah, this, it's TV is is tough in its own right now, isn't it? Even from like from what I little I know about it, I mean, four or five years ago when I started with Demo Ivor, there was money to be talked about, you know. Yeah. Now it's like no. mm. as we've not the internet is killing us basically. Yeah. That was the bottom line that was coming across. Like yeah, say. and yet they will have to that 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 also it's sort of chicken and egg thing until they yes. invest properly yeah. so that they can be because the thing is as well like even in in the US um, and. Carl's from LA so I've been out there and done some acting classes there and stuff um, and what they'll say there is like if you're not making your own stuff why would mm. we invest in you number yeah. one that's what they say so everyone's making internet for want of a better word yeah. content but so everyone's putting their stuff up online and, and that's great you have to keep working and you have to you have to get your stuff out there somehow so I totally see why people are doing it but if networks and that want to compete yeah. they're going to have to just take risks yeah. and you know look online see who's exciting and then make the thing and make it better but to give the person that support so it's not as yeah, it's a lazy yeah, yeah. it's a cop out I'm, I'm yeah. going to say it it's a cop out to just go the internet is killing us it's like invest in good stories and that's one of the other reasons you know for Are You a Prick yeah. it's like that's more about the, the, the networks than anything mm. else and it's it, not just Ireland it's across the world oh yeah and that's why people like Netflix are so exciting they're taking risks on yeah. unusual things they're putting things in different markets so you'll have a Brazilian show with English subtitles yeah, or yeah, dubbing yeah. but you're getting a chance to see it it's getting you know we'd never get to see that not suddenly so this has a huge audience and and then you know that Netflix is taking chances on things like like Orange is the New Black where it's yeah. female led female driven female written many female directors it's like what um, and they yeah. would have been told but there's no market for women's stuff. yeah of course yeah, but they yeah. just went if a story's good it'll work they took that now who knows as they evolve whether they'll start to get more conservative yeah I've but been, the moment I've, they're I've, doing what I'm talking about taking the risk I've been told like I've just listened to other people like um, especially with animation and stuff on Netflix it was Bill Burr was saying he could not believe when he went to Netflix because they went no no this is not even close to foul enough you need to push this yeah, shit big yeah. time, like. They give it its own voice. Because the way they look at it is like people were going worldwide anyway, so there'll yeah. be enough people look at it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. they're and it's subscription based. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So win win. Yeah, and that is great. F is for fathers. Oh it's, Jesus it's brilliant. Christ! Yeah, I mean, I, I, there's something silly I love about the idea of I'd love to do you, like you did voiceovers for cartoons and obviously you did the kids ones and stuff. Yeah. Is there ever a notion where you go? I'd love to be cursing and swearing and a thing too. Like ah yeah, but I get to do that all the time. <laughs> so I, I don't really mind reining it in for certain things. Did you live in LA? For no, a- never lived there. Um, I do. We do try if we go out. Um, we try and get the benefit of the, the, the you know the maximum value from the flight. So yeah. we try and stay for like a month. Oh, class! Um, and so you get to know it quite well that way. But um, no, I've never lived there. No. Would you live there? I don't know. I'd, I'd need. I'd need a. I'd need work. I oh, of course, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but yeah, if if I got a lovely job or whatever, I would live there. I mean, I I really like it. I actually yeah. do really like it. Um, I like that people are very very open. I love the diversity. Yeah, I love the fact that you know all of human life really is there. And and from a work point of view, I love that it is a very industry town yes yeah, obviously yeah. it's got lots of other facets to it as well but of course I'm fascinated by people who write or act or yeah. or edit or whatever and the amount of screeners or, or things that are happening every yeah. day it's very exciting it's very stimulating You, you I always come back and I haven't been in three and a half years nearly four but because um, everyone has this opinion because because Carl's from LA that we're there all oh, the time and it's like time. I haven't yeah, been yeah. there for three and a half years <laughs> but um, what I, I, I always come back in really inspired because yeah. everyone's working on something now there's an awful lot of bullshit and there's an yes, awful lot of yeah, yeah, I have yeah. one script it's my script and I'm going to keep going for 50 years till I sell my <laughs> script and it's like maybe you need to be diversifying yeah. a little bit and doing other things or making that script 
better or whatever who knows but I always come back going oh wow I really got to work I've got to work harder yes I suppose but people work hard there like 20 million people you got to put yeah you got to do something like how are you excelling and that's something I really learned there was like you know coasting is not an option no you've got to um, and you've got to excel somehow and alright so let's say you've got the deal or, or I'm very lucky I have a bit of profile now where yeah. I can maybe get a meeting to, to get something made or whatever I want to go extra for that meeting I want yeah. to do a bit more so even if they say there's too much or we need to pull back or whatever I'd rather do that than go okay I'm going to waste this by coasting because <laughs> then <laughs> I'll good. kick myself yeah I know it's all about me it's really this isn't just me about this... being having a good work ethic it's about me going I don't want to be kicking myself yes yeah 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 <laughs> well that's yeah fucking hell I've done, I've done that a few times but then I suppose for mm. me it was more uh, it was probably lack of knowledge really in preparing myself for the, the audition or whatever but it is funny when you're in an audition and you can see it in their eyes for you've done something or something's clicked and they're like yeah all right we'll just wait for the next guy <laughs> you know uh, yeah. it's not you you know but what I mean it's not you it's really not you especially if you've done your prep but then if you if you haven't done your prep yeah. then of course you're going to kick yourself and you, you'll always wonder so it's better to prepare as best you can when did you, have you ever pulled off a move like in where you smashed it out of the, out of the don't know uh, no I don't think I've done anything specific other than I mean there are lovely surprises sometimes where you yeah. turn out to be right for the party even though you're not right for the part yes, where someone yeah, yeah. Change, you change someone's mind maybe that's very rare but it does happen and I, I worked on a lovely thing called Hide and Seek years ago with Dervla Walsh who's incredible right. um, but uh, I went in and I hadn't been seen for it at all and they were on the second round and um, it was just the right it was just the right fit for the role and they wanted her, someone who had a little bit of country going on and uh, a sidekick really for Marie Doyle Kennedy's character. Oh, right, yeah, um, yeah. So they wanted someone blonde and I patently wasn't. And so <laughs> I went back for a callback and they said, would you would you mind going a little bit lighter in your hair? Right, color? oh, yeah. <laughs> so I ended up being bleach beach blonde for <laughs> three months. Yeah, which was mad. Fair play yeah. to you. But, so, I mean, things like that can happen, but you just, you're either right for a part of yeah. it or not. You're what they have in their head. And often they have a person in mind and they want that person, they can't get that person out of their heads. You just learn a lot. You learn to be philosophical about it. Yeah. It's always disappointing. You always want to get the gig. Always. Right, yeah, of course. Like, I mean... But, yeah, on to the next one. I had to take in, uh, I brought a letterbox. Was I telling you that story oh, that time? No? no. I brought a letterbox into an audition. David. That's great. I didn't, but see, this is again naivety, I suppose, in my in my part because I didn't realize I was. I thought that this is how everybody went into an audition. You went in full throttle, like yeah. Well, yeah, and, and a lot of people do, and, and, and I, but and I, then sometimes they don't want that, or they yeah. I, but you know, because you've got to be, you've got to do what you think is right. Yeah, that's, that's it. I talk. The, the the scene was to be talking through a letterbox. So but I that, figured, well... That sounds amazing to me. Would I not just bring the letterbox? So I, I went up to a hardware shop around the corner here and just brought it in <laughs> and talked through the letterbox. And you could even see the faces on the five of them sitting behind the table going, oh, all right, fair enough. But they were videoing it and they played it for the director and he was like, yeah, that's your man. That's, that's yeah, brilliant. If he's mad enough to go by... It. But I didn't think it. it was mad. I just thought... Would this not visually help the situation? Like, yeah, so you know, it's, it's it's always interesting, and you know, people have that question a lot about why shouldn't I go in and costume or as close to? Yeah, it's just sometimes a bit of a distraction. I get it. From, yeah. from what you're doing, but but also there are other directors who just go like that, and it's perfect for that part. Yeah, you show commitment, and like everyone loves that. Soupy Norman. Soupy Norman. How like that yeah. still to this day absolutely splits me up laughing at it. Oh. How much fun was that to make? That was amazing, and that's something I'll I'll always laugh at myself. Um, but uh, yeah, Barry Murphy and Mark Doherty um, just knocked it out of the park with because people have done dubbing over. Oh, people I know, haven't seen but it, but people have done dubbing over. You know, redubbing something from other languages or redubbing. You know, um, it was a bad sign language. I can't remember what is it that's called. There or was badly really, dubbed porn. Yeah, badly dubbed um, porn. But... All those, but this was the script. The script was the thing, and it was Barry and Mark. And oh my god, I was laughing from the minute I looked at it. And uh, so then, and the team was just fab. Sue Collins, the former yeah, yeah, yeah. colleague, and uh, Mario Rosenstock, and Mark, and Barry. And it's still to yeah. this day, it, but it doesn't matter. You, I genuinely believe you could put Sue Norman on any TV channel in any country, any English speaking country, anyway. Like. Yeah. What was it, what was it taken from? I never it looked at it. Polish soap, I believe, and they just took, <laughs> took half hour episodes, and they took bits from different episodes, and they just chopped it down to a 10, ten minute, oh uh, ten minute six part series. 
Yeah, it's still like if anybody listening has not heard of Soupy Norman, you have to go. It's just delightfully mad, and yeah, That's, I love, love the silliness of the it. Silly like, is my favourite. It's just absolutely outstanding. I think we we kind of caught that. Sounds brilliant, and I actually have to go. So I leave you with your hobnobs you're in your, your in your abs- I'm going to scoff them the whole way. The car oh, is going really? to be destroyed in hobnob crumbs, but then it Fabulous. could it could be destroyed in worse things or enhanced. I like your your way of looking at things, Tara. This is it. Absolutely. Thank it's you so, so much. Always flip it. <laughs> <laughs>